Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, July 6th. No, August 6th, 2018. I am Super Derek, and this is your JRPG Weekly Update, starting with news from Octopath Traveler, or news about Octopath Traveler. It has sold over 1 million copies worldwide, which is, uh, it's a lot. But the Nintendo Switch has sold 20 million units, so this is a 5% market penetration, which for a, a pretty niche turn-based uh, sort of game is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, it's not quite near the Final Fantasies and the Pokemons and the Fallout 4s and stuff, but it's, it's still uh, a million copies is a million copies. So that's really cool. Also, the uh, Steam release for Chrono Trigger has received its final update, guys. Uh, Chrono Trigger on Steam was released originally in February 27th earlier this year, so it's been just under six months, and they've released their final major update, which includes uh, features like key rebinding, able to type in names uh, with your keyboard now. They've done a lot so far since the game was released, but it's been six months, so I would hope so. The plans for these patches were revealed on the heels of massive fan backlash after the game was uh, released on Steam in a uh, in a terrible mess of a state. So I'm really glad to see that Square has made good on their promises to improve. Uh, let's just see how well everybody likes that now. And if you've been playing Chrono Trigger on Steam, please let us know down in the comments below. How is that doing for you now that they've released all these updates? Is it is it night and day or is it just kind of like a, you know, surface level? Moving on, we have some new games that were announced last week that I'd like to talk about, starting with Persona Q2. Uh, new Cinema Labyrinth is the subtitle, which is going to feature characters from Persona 3, 4, and 5. And it's coming out in Japan in November of 2018, uh, which is only a few months away, which is pretty awesome. Uh, a US release has not yet been specified, but uh, given the popularity of the series in the, in the United States, it seems like it's more popular here than in Japan, uh, we're most likely going to see it. So uh, fingers crossed. Also, this is not something I would normally cover because it is a mobile game, but Ark the Lad R was announced for iOS and Android, and uh, well, Based on the trailer, you can't really tell very much about it, but it looks like it could be pretty cool. It doesn't look like a really cheap mobile game. It looks like it's, it, it almost looks like it was developed for the uh, PSP based on like the, the visual style and the graphics. Uh, it looks like it could be pretty promising, but we will see um, because I think that a lot of this will come down to is, you know, how many microtransactions are there gonna be in this mobile game? Or is it a game that you pay up front for and then uh and then you just have the game i don't know uh we we need to get more information on this and uh it could be really cool we shall see now this next one comes from jonathan mejia from twitter if you have news that you would like me to cover on uh jrpg weekly update please be sure to tweet them to me at super Derek rpgs with the hashtag super Derek news and i will give you the credit now this is actually not so much of an announcement uh but sort of announcement the president of NIS of, uh, well, Nipponichi Software, not not America, but Nipponichi Software says that he promises to make a Disgaea 6 at some point. I mean, I kind of expected a Disgaea 6 at some point, but I guess uh, it's nice to know that they're looking at it and planning to make <laughs> more copy, more, more games in the series. Uh, because it's a pretty popular series, I'm not surprised, but uh, hey, it's uh, it's something. It's not nothing. Moving on, Namco Bandai have announced Digimon Survive will be coming to the West, which is excellent news. Uh, Digimon Survive is a uh, it's expected to come to the West in 2019 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC, which is going to be uh, really great for a lot of people out there who are, you know, PC gamers. <laughs> I'm happy you guys are getting more of these games. Honestly, the more these games sell, the better. Now, Digimon Survive, as we know, is going to be a turn-based strategy RPG uh, with visual novel elements and an emphasis on uh, survival. Uh, we do have some 
release date updates to go over as well, uh, including a, an indie action RPG called CrossCode, which is going to be officially released in September of this year. The game is currently on Steam on early access uh, for $20 if you want to see what that's like you know, in advance. Uh, or you can just hang on for a little while longer and uh, and get the full release when it comes out. And also, Compile Heart's tactical RPG, Arc of Alchemist, will be coming to PlayStation 4 on November 29th. Uh, though that is in Japan and does not specify uh, a Western release date. Now it's time for my favorite part of the show where I get to talk about me. <laughs> this is your Super Derek Week in Review. Starting with uh, Wednesday of last week, I took on Octopath Traveler. Uh, where we talked about its success, and I talked about a number of environmental factors and design choices that led it to becoming the sensation that it has. Friday, I released the second video in this year's Summer of Suikoden reviews, covering Suikoden Tactics, and Suikoden 5 is expected uh, this week. During my daily live streams, I finished up my playthrough of Suikoden 5, and today I will begin my own playthrough of Octopath Traveler, which will probably be happening as you watch this today. So, uh, make sure you check that out and uh, and say hi. I always love to see new people. Also, during Friday night's extra long Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge, we got to see a good old fashioned grind fest as I made my preparations to take on Koga. But was it enough? As always, archives of my live streams can be found at my streaming channel, Super Derek Streams, which I will link to here. Moving on, we've got some new releases for this week, starting with Minute, which is coming to the Nintendo Switch on August 9th. It's a 2D action adventure game where you have 60 seconds to make uh, progress before returning to your spawn point to begin the next day. Uh, it looks kind of like a novel take on a sort of Zelda style game, uh, but it looks like it took the concept of Majora's Mask and took it to an absurd degree. Also coming out for Nintendo Switch on August 9th is the Okami HD Remaster, which uh, if you're a fan of Okami and you've got a Nintendo Switch and uh, want to pick it up, definitely do so. Uh, it's not exactly an RPG, but hey, it's a pretty cool game anyway. And coming to Xbox One is the turn-based strategy game called City of the Shroud. So if you have an Xbox One and want to scratch that uh, turn-based strategy itch, uh, this could be the game to help you do that. And coming to PC is uh, Jimmy in the Pulsating Mass, which is a Japanese style RPG. Uh, I've heard a little bit about it and it looks pretty cool visually. Um, yeah, <laughs> so if you guys have any uh, news that you would like to have me cover uh, moving forward, anything, especially community news, definitely reach out to me because I would love to be able to announce community events for RPGs, uh, anything of the sort. So definitely do uh, reach out to me at Super Derek RPGs on Twitter with the hashtag Super Derek News. And everybody, thank you for joining me, and I will see everybody next week uh, or maybe today. I'll see you when I see you, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. I am Super Derek, and this was news to me.